Chapter Five of Tom Swift in Captivity by Victor Appleton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tom Weiss. Chapter Five. Andy Foger learns something. Once Tom Swift made up his mind to do a thing, he did not waste time in setting about it. He had decided to go to Giant Land, and that was all there was to it. His father talked with him about the matter pointed out the dangers, and suggested that, as the young inventor had had many adventures in the last few years, and had made considerable money from the discovery of the city of gold and the platinum mines, the prize offered for a giant was not much of an inducement. "'But it isn't that so much, Dad,' explained Tom. "'There's that poor circus man maybe suffering in the center of South America. I want to find him if I can, or get some news that he died a natural death and is decently buried. You never can do it, Tom. Well, Dad, I'm going to make a big try, he returned, and that settled it as far as Tom was concerned. For several days after the visit of Mr. Preston, Tom was busy making plans for his trip to South America. He wanted to lay out a regular schedule before proceeding. Ned Newton had had hard work to persuade his folks to let him go, but they finally consented, and as for Mr. Damon, his plan was simple. Without mentioning giants at all, he took Mr. Preston home with him, and the circus man's tale of his assistant lost in the wilds of South America was too much for Mrs. Damon. "'Go, of course you'll go,' she said to her husband. "'I demand that you go, and I want you to find that poor man and rescue him. If you could rescue the exiles from uncivilized Siberia, I'm sure you can get a man out of a civilized country.' Mr. Damon did not stop to point out that South America was far less civilized in some ways than was Russia. He just kept still and made his preparations to go. Mr. Preston was a distant relative of the odd man, and that was how he happened to meet him and hear the story which was destined to play such an important part in the life of Tom Swift. "'Do you think we'll have much trouble after we get to South America and strike into the interior?' asked Mr. Damon one afternoon, when he and Mr. Preston were helping Tom in the delicate work of packing the wing planes of the lark. "'No, South America isn't a bad country to travel in,' replied the circus man. "'The natives are fairly friendly, and with a well-organized party and plenty of money, which I shall see that you have, you ought to get along swimmingly. Only one thing bothers me.' "'What's that?' asked Tom quickly. "'That's my rival, Waydell.' He's sure to make trouble if he gets on your trail. Have you heard from him? No, and that's what makes me all the more suspicious. If he'd come out and fight me in the open, it wouldn't be so bad. But this underhand business gets on my nerves. I don't know what he's up to. Maybe he isn't up to anything, suggested Ned. He may not even know you are going to make another try for the Giants. Oh, yes, he does, replied the circus man. He didn't succeed in beating me when poor Jake was after them, for the simple reason that it was a snap case, and even I didn't know that Pottington was trying for the Giants until he had started. But Waydell was soon after him, and he knows that when I once set out for a freak or a certain kind of animal, I keep on until I get it. So he has probably already figured out that I'm making new plans to get a Giant. But how will he know that I am going? inquired Tom. I don't know how we will find out, but he will. We circus men have queer ways of finding out things. I shouldn't be a bit surprised but what he was already plotting and scheming to send an expedition on my trail to take advantage of anything you may learn. Well, we'll try and fool him the same as we did the Mexicans when we hunted for the city of gold, spoke Tom. And then putting aside that worry, he and the others labored hard to get matters in shape for a departure to South America. "'I suppose Eradicate is going,' remarked Ned, in the intervals of packing the aeroplane. "'Well, I've hinted it to him,' replied Tom, "'but I haven't asked him outright. He said he wouldn't mind going to a hot country, though. Here he comes now. Guess I'll see how he takes it.' The colored man shuffled up with a hammer and nails, for he had been putting covers on packing boxes. "'Then you are coming with us to South America, aren't you, Rad?' asked Tom, winking at Ned. "'South America? Am dat de hot country you all was referencin' to?' asked Eradicate. "'That's it, Rad. It's nice and warm there, 
All you have to do is lie under a tree, and coconuts will drop off into your mouth. Coconuts in my mouth, Massa Tom. Excuse me, I don't want to go to no such country as dat. Coconuts in my mouth. Why, I ain't got but a few teeth left, and a coconut dropping off on a tree would surely knock dem teeth out, surely. Oh, Rad, I didn't mean coconuts. I meant oranges and bananas. They're soft and tom glanced quickly at ned for he saw that he had made a mistake oh well then dat's different massa tom i just loves oranges and bananas and if you all is sure dat i'll find some why i'll come along find em oh of course you will cried ned and coconuts too added tom only rad i meant to say that the monkeys would throw the coconuts down to you from the trees that breaks the hard shells you see and all you have to do is take out the meat and drink the milk. Then the monkeys throw you down a palm-leaf fan to cool yourself off while you're eating it. Oh, I tell you, Rad, South America is the place to go to have a good time. I believe you, Massa Tom. When do we all start? Pretty soon now. And what all am you gwine arter, Massa Tom? The young inventor thought a moment. In times past he had not hesitated to confide in his colored helper but of late years eradicate had become somewhat childish and he talked more than was necessary tom wondered if it would be safe to trust the giant's secret to him after a moment's thought he realized that it would not be but at the same time he knew that if he did not give some kind of answer eradicate would become suspicious and that would be worse the colored helper had been with tom on too many trips not to know that his master never went without some object well rad we're after big game this time tom said i don't know what it will be that we'll get whether animals or plants and oh i knows massa tom y'all means dem orchard plants that live on air dem big orchard plants eradicate meant orchids of which many rare and beautiful kinds are found in south america yes rad i guess we will get some big orchids agreed tom and i surely will help climb dem trees arter them or maybe we can get de monkeys to throw em down same as they will de coconuts well maybe rad well now go ahead and nail up the rest of the boxes we want to get started as soon as we can and the colored man got busy murmuring from time to time something about oranges and bananas and coconuts every one was occupied in getting matters in shape for the trip to south america even mr swift laying aside his work on his pet invention a gyroscope while he helped his son and had tom not been quite so engrossed with his preparations he might have gone about town more in which case he would have learned something that might have saved him and the others considerable trouble and no little danger and this fact was that andy foger had been in shopton several times lately after the trouble which the red-haired bully and his father caused tom and his friends on their trip to the city of gold mr foger moved away from shopton he had lost his fortune and had to begin all over again. The Foger homestead was closed up, and Andy ceased to be a fixture of the town, for which Tom and Ned were very glad. But of late Andy had been seen in Shopton several times, and it was noticed that, on one or two occasions, he had a man with him, a man who seemed to have plenty of money, a man with an air about him not unlike that of Mr. Preston a man with what newspaper men would have called a circus or theatrical air. This man had visited Shopton soon after Mr. Preston made the giant proposition to Tom, and before meeting Andy Foger had made special inquiries about Tom Swift. Who are the people who have a hard feeling against this young inventor in town? The man had asked of several persons. Tom Swift has more friends than enemies, was the general reply oh surely he must have some enemies the man insisted he's been running his aeroplanes and autos around town a long time and surely there must be someone who has a grudge against him i suppose he has lots of friends but who are his enemies then he learned about andy foger and hearing that andy now lived in a nearby town the man had at once gone there it was not long before he reappeared and the red-haired bully was with him and you haven't learned anything yet andy asked this mysterious man one afternoon when he met his tool in a quiet resort in shopton nothing yet mr waydell but give me a little more time time you've had more time now than you need 
when I agreed to pay you for finding out what part of South America Tom Swift would head for to get some sort of a freak or animal for Preston Circus, I thought you'd make good quicker than this. So did I. But you see, Tom is suspicious of me, and so is his chum Ned Newton. I can't go to them, and if I'm seen sneaking around the house or shop after what happened last, I'll be driven off. Well, it's up to you. I paid you to get the information, and I expect you to do it. Why don't you tackle that old colored man whom I understand works for him? He ought to be simple enough to give the game away. Eradicate? I will. I never thought of that. I'll get that information for you, Mr. Waydell, in a few days. You'd better if you want to keep that money. The two plotters parted, and that very afternoon gave Andy the chance he wanted. He met Eradicate on his way to the village where he was going after something Tom needed. "'Hello, Rad,' called Andy with a show of good feeling. "'I haven't seen you in some time. I suppose you're getting too old to travel around with Tom any more?' "'Getting too old?' exclaimed the colored man indignantly, for that was his sore point. "'What you all mean, Andy Foger? I ain't getting old and neither am Boomerang.' "'Oh, I thought you were, as you haven't been on any trips lately. I ain't, eh?' "'Well, I's gwine on one right soon, let me tell you dat, Andy Foger. "'No, is that so? Glad to hear it. Up to the North Pole, I suppose. No, sir, not much. No cold country for this coon. It's gwine where it's nice and warm, and where the coconuts fall in your mouth. I mean, where the bananas and oranges fall in your mouth, and the monkeys throw down coconuts and palm leaf fans to you. "'Where's that, Rad?' asked Andy, and he tried to make his voice sound indifferent, as though the matter did not interest him. South America, dat's where it am, and I's gwine with Massa Tom. We's gwine to get a monstrous big orchard plant. Oh, yes, I've heard about them. Well, I hope you get all the oranges and bananas you want. South America, eh? I suppose along the Amazon River where they have crocodiles forty feet long that are always hungry. No, sir, no crocker miles for me. We ain't going near to Amazon River at all. We's gwine away down in the middle part of South America. It's a place something like Gomiawaway or Goonaway or or something like that. Oh yes, I know where you mean. And Andy could hardly conceal the note of triumph in his voice. He had the very information he wanted from the simple colored man. Yes, I guess there are no crocodiles there and plenty of monkeys and coconuts. Well, I hope you have a good time and Andy hurried away to seek out the rival circus man. End of chapter 5 Recording by Tom Weiss Tom's Audiobooks.com